We're going to take a look at some integration problems and in this video we're going to look at something called the lithostatic pressure. And the lithostatic pressure is basically the pressure exerted by the weight of rock, the weight of rock above a particular depth in the subsurface. And that, you know, obviously the rock is pushing down on everything beneath it with uh, a pr pressure um, that is related to its density and uh, times the acceleration due to gravity over uh, uh, the, the thickness of that integral. Now the density is, you know, would often be obtained through density logs. You'd have a borehole, you'd go out there, you'd measure the density at, uh, you know, in this case at 0.5 foot sample intervals and uh, you might have to kind of guess how the, or use data from wells nearby to determine or estimate how the density varies up to the depth where you began to run your logs and you don't uh, and rarely do actually run your logs all the way up to the surface. And in this case, in a marine environment, you've got um, you've got about a thousand uh, thousand feet of water. So we're thousand foot water depths in the Gulf of Mexico. This data set actually comes from uh, Mark Zoback's um, online course on geomechanics and is used in his uh, text. Um, so when you're working with logs, you're actually doing a discrete summation. So we have the density defined at half foot intervals. We measure, we multiply that times the uh, acceleration due to gravity. We, we sum them, sum them, sum the products up all the way from the surface uh, down to the maximum depth, uh, which would be a certain number of samples depending on the sample rate. So what we have up here is the continuous form. You know, if we had some analytical expression representing the density, we could plug that in. And that's what, that's the kind of a situation that we're going to be illustrating here. Uh, so the integrand in this integral, which is usually taken from, you know, it would be a definite integral in it. The integration limits usually run from the surface down to some maximum depth, the reservoir depth. And again, this is the density, this is the acceleration due to gravity, and uh, this is just the uh, uh, change in depth. So as always, as we have found, units are important. So you can really get into trouble, your calculations can can go wrong pretty quick if you mix units and everybody knows that and it happens happens to the best of us. So we have um, uh, the mass times the acceleration. So we have uh, density which is in kilograms per cubic meter times the acceleration which is in meters per second squared. And then this is multiplied times uh, dz, which is in meters. So that gives us, when we cancel everything out, that gives us uh, kilogram meters per second squared is a newton over meters squared. This is also, um, you know, one, one newton per meter squared is equal to one pascal. And I left out the uh, square there. Sorry about that. Uh, and so pascals is a common uh, metric uh, unit for uh, for um, pressure. And you can see over here we have density uh, as a function of depth. Here we have the lithostatic pressure in pascals, really big numbers. So megapascals are often a more convenient uh, unit to represent the changes in lithostatic, lithostatic pressure as a function of depth. And what we're doing, we're, we see the same trend here for this change in density as a function of depth. So the problem is to evaluate this uh, this integral. We we are given that rho of z, we're given an analytic expression for rho of z, would be the grain density here, or the matrix density, minus uh, a delta rho. Uh, 
which would be the difference between the uh, fluid density, which we're going to assume is just uh, one gram per cubic centimeter, and the grain density, which we're going to assume is uh, quartz, uh, 2.67 grams per cubic centimeter. So we have delta rho up here. This expression right in here is just the porosity depth relationship that we've talked about before. Phi zero is the porosity at depth zero. So we have this porosity depth relationship times uh, delta rho. And we're integrating all that. This is a definite integral. And so the problem would be to give this a try. Can you do it? Integrate this expression. So I'd say pause and uh, work through this work through this integral. Okay, so the first thing that you, you might do would be to evaluate the indefinite integral. And uh, when we do that, we, we have, you know, we can just distribute the integration through the terms here. These are constants, the uh, rho and the g. So we can just pull those out and the delta rho g phi zero. So we're really integrating dz and this integral is just going to give us z. And then over here we're just integrating e to the minus cz, which is going to give us minus e to the minus cz over c. And so we have a minus times a minus, we get a plus delta rho g phi zero over c, e to the minus cz. And then we have our constant uh, uh, for the indefinite integral. So this is the, the vertical stress uh, exerted by the overburden at a depth z. And we also refer to that as the lithostatic pressure. So now we want to evaluate it over a specific range, z from the surface all the way down to 2.7 kilometers. Let's assume that our reservoir is at 2.7 kilometers. And uh, you know we want to know what the lithostatic pressure is there. Uh, drilling engineers want to know all the, the stresses, the maximum, uh, minimum, and intermediate uh, uh, compressive principle stresses and, and their orientation in designing the uh, uh, the well completion. So at a depth of 2.7 kilometers, we're just evaluating this integral explicitly. And again, just a reminder over here of the values that we're using. So where we have g is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared, the grain density or the matrix density 2.67, the porosity at the surface 0.55, and this constant, now take a look at this. We have to have a dimensionless power up here. So this has units of kilometers. This has to have units of inverse kilometers because we're multiplying it times kilometers. We have to get rid of the units. So it's important to be units consistent here. Just taking a look at the first term, we get the 2670. So our 2.67 becomes 26, 2670 kilograms per cubic meter. We're okay here. We're consistent. Over here, the main problem is with this constant C. If we're going to go with kilogram meter second units, we have to tran transform this from units of inverse kilometers to units of inverse meters. So I'd say uh, give that a try. And this again um, can be problematic and um, so you've got to convert this 0.5 to 0.5 per kilometer to how much per meter? Well, it's going to be a lot, lot less, isn't it? And so if we go through the conversion, it would be a standard uh, conversion process. Uh, we have 0.5 per kilometer. We want to get rid of the units of kilometers, so we know that there is 0 0.001 kilometers per meter. So that would give us 0 0.0005 per meter, um, or 5 times 10 to the minus 4th per meter for this constant C. So it can make a big difference if you get this constant incorrect. Uh, evaluating the first term, we get about 70.65 um, 
megapascals. Uh, this term becomes negative, and we're subtracting minus 13.3 megapascals, and we get about 57.3 uh, megapascals, or 57,312,599 newtons per meter squared, or pascals. So again, uh, pascals tend to be the more convenient unit, uh, smaller numbers to uh, play around with. The discrete evaluation, when you're working with logs, you're actually going through this calculation in a discrete sense. Uh, you have rho sub i's. These would be the sample densities measured at 0.5 foot intervals. And you're, uh, so you're, you're going through the calculations here. I've, I've used a 100 meter interval here. And one of the things that you should should note is that if you compare the exact solution to that obtained from the discrete sum, now I've used a, admittedly a 100 meter calculation interval. Uh, the discrete sum is a little bit different. So we get 57.6 megapascals uh, instead of 57.3. So even with a 100 meter sample interval, we're still pretty pretty close. So this is an example of integration in action and uh, you know an example problem where we've had to go through the integration process and uh, next time around we're going to determine the mass of a one kilometer slice of the spreading ridge going through the mid-ocean ridge out to a distance where the depth to the seafloor is 4 kilometers. So, see you next time.